JNN is brought to you by Don Roberto Jewelers. Been a long day. Um, we've all put in a lot of good work, so I think the show should turn out pretty well. But uh, Lizette is ticking me off. I don't know what to do. Anisa, can you help me, please? I don't know what to do in this part. Sure. So I'm trying to follow the theme here, but like. Hey, I... here, everyone. Let's get out of here. I'd really appreciate if they didn't walk out on me like that. But you know, there's food. All right, guys, we have one hour left to finish the show. So you if the story's done, done please. <laughs> Yes. You haven't made any progress, so I'm like... Trust me, it's a lot less tiring than what it looks. We have a deadline to meet, and everyone needs to stick to it. All right, guys, we're done here. Good morning, Gregory. Hi, I'm Jake Bailey. And I'm Anahisa Medina. Today is Friday, May 20th. Today, we take a look at the controversy of Modesto Christian entering the MMC, and Lee Nelamoto brings us senior moments for the last time. Then, we bid farewell to a teacher on campus who will be leaving Gregory after this school year, and wrap up with a look back at this year's events. So, so let's, let's get, get started. started. For some students, the senior Disneyland trip took place on Friday the 13th. However, complications arose prior to and throughout the trip for others. Emma Jacobson and Kelly Kiernan bring you the story. My daughter walked the streets for three months trying to sell candy bars so I wouldn't have to pay for the whole trip for her senior trip. She's been looking forward to this since the 10th grade. She showed up at 4.30 in the morning on Friday the 13th and finally about 12 o'clock she calls me and as soon as she heard my voice she burst into tears all upset and I instantly thought she got in a car wreck, the bus wreck. No, she never got to go. Friday the 13th means a lot of things to superstitious people. And for Gregory seniors this year, it meant bad luck. Their senior trip to Disneyland just happened to be on this day. The seniors were organized into eight groups on Friday morning. And by 6.30 a.m., those eight groups began to wonder when their buses would arrive. Through the course of events on Friday morning, we had a failure of um, buses to arrive on time. And ultimately, we had a failure of buses to arrive at all. Uh, which created a, a compounding effect of consequences that kind of rippled throughout the entire experience, including uh, one bus that had a really, really poor experience. For the first five groups, the wait would last for an hour and a half. For the sixth group, 
The wait would last two and a half hours, and the seventh group would wait for an hour after that. The 36 students in group eight never reached the happiest place on earth. There's no confirmation of us having a bus, and we didn't find that out for hours. So we were just basically sitting there, and we had no idea what was going on until like 11 o'clock when everyone just left. I feel bad for the bus that didn't get a go and all the kids that were supposed to be on it. I mean, some of them were special ed kids that don't even get to experience some um, moments that we do get to experience. I feel really bad because I'm a pal and I'd love for them to experience that. However, most of the senior class was fortunate enough to board a bus. I was on the dreaded bus six. Um, we didn't leave until about eight. So we, we stood by after watching the first five buses go, not knowing when ours was gonna get here. And then when we first saw our bus, it was not nice. It wasn't what all the other bus looked like. It was not what a $260 bus should look like. This bus was bus six. Bus six was really disrespected by the bus driver. Our safety was put in danger because the bus driver was texting and driving. He got pulled over by the police, LAPD, from breaking traffic laws or texting and driving. We're not sure which one. We were never told. Although nothing could compensate for the loss of the Disneyland experience, Modesto City Schools and Adventures America struck a tentative agreement regarding reimbursement on Monday afternoon, which was communicated to seniors and their parents later that evening. So the proposal, the tentative agreement that was communicated to me this afternoon was that students that were unable to attend, that missed the experience, whether they chose to not go uh, after their buses uh, did not arrive or um, well, basically any student that did not attend, they're going to get a full refund of their $260 plus 10%, which is about $285. Uh, those students that were on bus number six that had um, an exorbitant number of issues um, are going to be refunded their full amount of $260. And those students that were on bus number seven that arrived uh, very late as well are going to be uh, reimbursed $100 of their $260 fee. Again, that doesn't, you know, money isn't going to make it different. Money isn't going to make the experience or the memory better, um, but it's the only thing that tonight I had to offer based on what we were able to resolve with the company today. The district did fight harder. On Tuesday, it was revealed that the 36 students that did not go to Disneyland received a full refund and the opportunity to go to Disneyland today. According to Godot, decisions regarding next year's senior trip are yet to be determined. So maybe after all, the happiest place on earth is still within reach. Reporting for JNN, this has been Emma Jacobson and Kelly Kiernan. Thanks guys. Summer varsity girls soccer players have earned all league MMC honors this season. Elizabeth Hayes, Natalie O'Brien, and Alyssa Frosch earned first team honors. Jasmine Rodriguez, Chelsea Rios, and Monica Vigil earned second team. And Rocio Perez earned an audible mention. Congratulations, girls, and congratulations to the girls' soccer team for winning their second consecutive MMC championship. All sports lockers must be cleared out by today or else they will be cleared out by custodians. There will be a meeting at lunch today in the girls' locker room for anyone wanting to play tennis in the fall. Modesto Christian has stirred up many questions regarding the placement in the Modesto Metro Conference. And Asa Medina and Austin Charlie bring you the story. In the last two years, a national dilemma made its way to the Modesto Metro Conference. News organizations such as the New York Times and Forbes have brought the dilemma of uneven playing fields to the attention of many. Our story focuses on the current Modesto Metro Conference League champion in basketball, Modesto Christian. They went undefeated in league play and won the Sackwalking section title for a second year in a row. They then progressed four games into playoffs, ending their playoff run in the state quarterfinals at the Sleep Train Arena. Because of Modesto Christian's long-term strength for the boys and girls basketball program, people are questioning their presence in the MMC, a league that hasn't seen the boys basketball team go deep into playoffs in 10 years. And by going deep into playoffs, I mean playing for the Sacqua King section title in 2006. Manessa Christian was placed in the M MMC last year after dominating the Trans Valley League for eight years. They moved up as a result of league realignments. We spoke to Manessa Christian's athletic director, Greg Pierce, regarding the decision for the move. Uh, so everybody makes propo proposals and they do that from different standpoints. And when the proposal was made uh, for us to go into 
the MMC, which was done by the committee themselves. It wasn't the Metro, the Metro Metro Conference. They then look at it as committee, and then there's a decision made at some point by the committee. When you have larger schools, you have a chance of having more talent on the court. So overall, it was a win-win for us. Um, I, Maybe the scores don't reflect it, but when you step back and look at all the things that go into games, yeah, it was definitely a win-win. Well, it was a difficult situation because the Modesto City schools wanted to stay together. We wanted to, all of the schools, the seven public schools, to be able to stay in one league. And the CIF told us they were going to split us up and send some of us to play Turlocks, Atwaters, Merced schools. And then the other ones, the smaller schools in Modesto would play maybe Oakdale or some of the VOL schools. We didn't want that, but um, the agreement was we'd take Modesto Christian. Well, that wasn't the agreement of the basketball coaches. That was the agreement of everybody else, um, the administrators more so than any of the coaches. So it helped all the sports except for boys and girls basketball. From 1997 to 2016, Modesto Christian has won consecutive league championships. In their first season in the MMC, Modesto Christian not only maintained their undefeated league record, but they also outscored the Modesto City Public Schools by an average of 38 points. They extended their undefeated record this year and increased their winning point year average to 45 points over their public school rivals. These lopsided scores by a private school over a group of public schools calls into question Modesto Christian's presence in the MMC. Take note, only Modesto Christian basketball was added to the MMC. The other Modesto Christian sports were allowed to remain in the TVL because they weren't competitive enough for the MMC. This double standard not only contributes to a sense of unfairness, but suggests favoritism on the part of the CIF. Well, M Modesto Christian's a small school. Um, it's a school of 150, 200 kids, they don't field every sport the way the, the rest of the MMC does. And uh, um, this is a school that for the most part, most of their programs, they, they, they wouldn't fit in the MMC. Basketball, um, I guess an argument could be made that basketball does not fit in the MMC as well because they are so strong. Um, this is also a school that is really well known and pretty much across the country as far as a place where um, where Division I basketball prospects end up, whether they're you know, from this country, that, you know, some of them are definitely kids from other countries that move in. Um, they're extremely strong at basketball, much stronger than their enrollment implies. And moving them to the Modesto Metro Conference, um, it, it places them against much stronger, you know, or, or much larger teams, I should say, and well, and it allows for our playoff format, it allows us to move them up to a division where they're going to be a lot more competitive and they're not really messing things up for the much lower division. Here's the difference between Modesto Christian basketball versus their other teams. Modesto Christian has a strong rate of success that attracts players from all over. A success that has extended over a period of 17 years. Um, originally, for, for continued success, you have to win three in a row. And uh, they they won they won more than three and this this is a rule that came into play probably four or five years ago. Uh, but over, over the last you know six seven years they were kind of mired down there in Division Five and Division Four and uh, putting in continued success allowed us to move them up. For public schools, attendance area largely determines which players play for what schools. Gregory draws from an attendance area represented by this map. Private schools do not play by these rules. Private schools have the ability to attract players from anywhere in the world, and Modesto Christian is a good example of this, featuring players from countries such as Brazil, Taiwan, England, and Colombia. According to head coach Richard Midgley, who himself came from out of the country to play Modesto Christian basketball, currently has five students who have moved to the area and now live with host families in order to play for the Crusaders. So a lot of times it's like you'll just get an email. So I'll get Literally, I'll get an email, I won't say every other week, but pretty close to that. Like this year, just because we're so highly ranked, I mean, the contact I've had has been crazy. So it's like students that 
or players internationally that are looking to come to the States, what they'll do is they'll just look at rankings, see a certain school, and then they'll just shoot out an email or contact them that way. So that's usually how it happens. The CIF has no clear answer on where to place MC basketball. In the meantime, they answered the dilemma by moving Modesto Christian basketball to Division I for playoffs by placing them in the MMC. When it comes to Modesto City schools and their competition towards playoffs, it has become increasingly difficult to earn a playoff spot. After reaching out to all Modesto City schools' boys varsity basketball coaches, only Mike Vandermolen chose to speak to us. And, according to Vandermolen, the rate of sportsmanship issues has increased since last year between Modesto City schools and Modesto Christian. Um, comments made on the court, um, other coaches, it, other teams in our league had problems with direct, vulgar comments made to the head coach. Um, Sportsmanship things during games were led to no, not shaking hands after games with another school. Um, you know, that's not Modesto City Schools. Um, character and sportsmanship is, I think the MMC emphasizes that more than any other league. Realignment meetings take place every four years in effort to reevaluate programs and school population and place them where they fit best. When it comes to MC, the perfect fit is yet to be found. The possibilities range for the team. As for now, Modesto Christian boys and girls basketball will remain in the Modesto Metro Conference for two more years. This has been Anaisa Medina and Austin Shirley reporting for JNN. Thanks guys. Attention all Global Club members. Mr. Orlando and Mrs. Miranda would like to thank you all for your hard work this year. Also, remember to take part in the Shut the Door Behind You campaign and to have a great summer. Looking for a job? Apply at selectstaffing.com. For more information, visit the Career Center. And now, Leonella Lamoto brings you this week's Senior Moments. Hey seniors, it's Leonella here with your Senior Moments. Can you believe it? There's only two more days until graduation day. But before we walk that stage, there's a few announcements you need to know. If you are attending MJC, SCSU, or UC, stop by the D building and sign up with your final transcript to Miss Brazil. If you do not sign up before graduation, your transcripts will not be sent in June. Today is the last day we attend all classes, and senior parents' cards are due to your counselor by 2 o'clock. Senior breakfast is this Monday, 8.30 in the gym. Breakfast will be provided, senior best will be awarded, and graduation tickets will be distributed following breakfast outside of the C building. Finally, Tuesday, graduation day. We will have graduation practice in the stadium at 8 and will be dismissed by noon. All seniors must arrive back at school at 6.30. Graduation DVD orders will be placed at the ceremony for only $25. Also, the Gregory Flora Department will be selling orchid lays and wrap roses. Sober grad night now is free. Come celebrate with your friends at Boomers from 10 p.m. to 3 a.m. Stop by the SBO and sign, for, sign up for your tickets now. We gave you seniors an opportunity to share a special memory that made your high school year. Take a look at these two stories. My name is Katina Savala and this is my senior moment. Senior moment is when I was at clinical and me and my partners were changing the resident in bed and um, I look all of a sudden like I looked down and like my pants fell down and it was pretty embarrassing but I had leggings underneath and that day but not every day would I wear like those leggings. I like looked at my partner to see like what I saw, if they saw and then um, they didn't see so then like I finished up with the resident and then after like we were done, I like told them like, did you see what happened? They're like, what are you talking about? It's pretty like embarrassing, but it was funny at the same time. And it's something like I'll always remember. And, and that's my senior moment. I'm Nathan Duffy, and this is my senior moment. Uh, I would have to say my moment <laughs> is when we played Mohai for a football homecoming, and uh, we're about the 14 yard line at their side of the field, and my boy Cam threw me a pass over the top of my defender, I caught it for a touchdown. We were down by a couple points, but it was just a cool experience to have all your friends rooting for you. And then running back to the sideline, having all your coaches high-fiving you on the top of the head and everything. It was just a really cool experience, and the environment was great. So that was my senior moment. That's it for your senior, mo senior moments this year, Jags. I hope you had an awesome school year. I'm Leonella Moda, signing off one last time. Back to you, Italia. 
Gregory's music director, Dan Bryan, is officially resigning at the end of this year. Justin Yang and Catherine Swartz bring you this story. I, I think I'm, I'm better as a teacher when there's a lot to lose. I don't know, there's something about that. Maybe it's the freelancer in me, the, the, mus the freelance musician in me, where you're either great or you don't get a job again. Does that make sense? Like, I I'm still live that life. I still get hired to go play. I still get hired to write get for gigs. I get hired to go over the place and do clinics and everything else. And if you're not great at it, if you don't come with the great information, if you don't come with a great product, well, hey, guess what? They don't hire you again. I want to teach. That's what I want to do. I, I just That's what I want to do right now, and maybe for the rest of my career, I just want to be a teacher. His career began at Los Banos High School and continued on to Davis High School. In 2009, he was given the job to create a music department for Gregory. While the band faced challenges along the way, he has grown as a music teacher in the process. We weren't terrible, but we weren't very good. And then, then really what happened was last year's senior class showed up and suddenly we had a program. And while Brian has enjoyed the growth and success of the music department at Gregory, a new job opportunity has come his way, which he will be taking in the fall. I am leaving Gregory to go to Stanislaw Union School District, which is right up the road from here. Um, they have five elementary schools and one uh, junior high school. And I'm being brought in to design their entire instrumental music program and start it from scratch. This sounds very similar to what we did at Gregory, but on a much more global scale. Aside from professional reasons as to why he's leaving Gregory, there was one more motive for his departure. At the top of the list, it's my family. I mean, really, I, this is, this is a lot to do if you want to do it well. I can't do all of those things and be a good husband and father anymore. And that's becoming really obvious. Dan's departure will have an impact on many of the band students as he has had a great effect on them both musically and personally. He's pushed me out of my comfort zone by making me join Drumline because that's when I found out that I actually really love to play marimba and I wouldn't have like joined if it wasn't for him. I wouldn't change anything, honestly. I, I wouldn't because um, what would you have given up if you changed something? If you went on a slightly different path, what good things that you've been able to enjoy would you have given up in the process? We're gonna like make sure that this new person continues everything that Dan started. Otherwise, his new job building music programs everywhere wouldn't work because if everything just fails when he leaves and there'd be really no point in him doing any of it. It's probably going to get a little harder for all of us to perform at the level we are now, but I think that if we just try really hard that we can make it work. When I came to Gregory, I had opinions about what we do wrong in high school music, and I wanted to do, I wanted to try to do it better, and I, and I feel the same way with elementary and junior high music. I, I think that there are a lot of things we're doing wrong. We just don't do music very well, and I think we can. We just need to relook at how we're doing what we're doing. As Dan looks forward to his new career and the opportunities it will bring, he will still miss the music students he is leaving behind. This is the group of people that means the most to me in, in all of this. On, on the 26th of May at 12.15 p.m., it's just done. And um, I, I, don't, I don't know how I feel about that right now. 34 concerts, 360 songs performed. Dan Bryan has left a legacy at Gregory that will be remembered long after his departure. Reporting for JNN, this has been Catherine Swartz and Justin Yang. Thanks guys. Attention multilingual students. It is time to apply for the seal of multilingual proficiency for next school year. It is a great opportunity for students to demonstrate their ability to speak, read, and write in more than one language and earn recognition on their high school diploma. If you are interested in applying or want more information, stop by room N101 to see Ms. Gonzalez. The 2015-2016 school year was filled with many exciting student events. Let's take a look back at some of the highlights.
Well, that's it for JNN this year. It's been a great three years of being on JNN. Should we do it? Let's do it. Reporting for JNN for the last time, I'm Jake Bailey. And reporting for JNN for the last time, I'm Anaisa Medina. Have, Have a, a great, great summer. summer.